life on the Red Horse Ranch. <laughs> Somehow or other, Alabama knew there was a possibility of finding oil on the Red Horse Ranch. A representative of an eastern oil company has made tests on the ranch and has asked for an oil lease on the land. And now we're waiting for Alabama to explain just how he made this discovery. We first join Mr. Carter, his daughter Rose, and Mr. Niles, the oil company representative at the ranch house. Well, Mr. Niles, I have good reason to believe that what you're telling me is the truth. That's the way I want you to feel, Mr. Carter. I'm glad you've taken time to investigate my standing and my company's standing. Have you read the lease over carefully? Yes, and I had my lawyer look it over in town. Everything seems to be satisfactory. Then I understand you're ready to sign the lease. I have your check here. There's no use wasting any more time. We'd like to get started drilling as quickly as possible. Are you sure that there's oil under this land? Well, Mr. Carter, as sure as a person can be until he's actually drilled, our geological tests make us pretty certain. Well, Rose, I don't suppose you have any objection to my signing this lease. <laughs> oh, it's marvelous, Dad. But we won't have to leave the ranch, will we? Why, certainly not. This oil lease merely gives the exclusive right to drill for oil on your land. We pay you the specified amount for the lease, and if oil is discovered, you'll receive your royalty. Uh, where do I sign? Uh, right there, Mr. Carter. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. I'll take this to town right away and have it filed. All right, Mr. Niles. I still can't realize just what's happened. <laughs> and I hope it turned out to be what we expect. Well, uh, I'll go now. Oh, no, Mr. Niles. We want you to stay for supper. If yes, you will. of course, of course. Stay, Niles. The rest of the boys would like to meet you. Very well. Uh, don't mind if I do. Certainly a wonderful ranch you have, Mr. Carter. Oh, listen. There are the boys out on the veranda. Let's go out and join them. met Mr. Niles before, haven't I, Niles? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had quite an interesting meeting. Yes, sir. 
Alabama's responsible for this discovery that may mean a lot to all of us. Alabama, I think it's time for an explanation, don't you, boys? Yes, being as Alabama's the hero of this business. Well, I'm afraid you're mistaken this time, folks. You'll find the hero of this little story out yonder in the pasture corral. What? Uh, out there in the corral? <laughs> there he goes, talking in circles again. <laughs> I'm talking about Red. If it hadn't been for him, I'd never have suspected that there was oil anywhere around here. Well, how in the name of Job would a horse find oil? Well, first of all, most of you know Red has been getting out of his corral at night and wandering off somewhere. Yeah. There wasn't nothing to surprise me, because he hadn't been in off the open range for more than six months. But it wasn't until about two months ago that I began noticing something powerful strange about Red's appearance when he'd get back off of them jaunts. Well, I saw him come back, and I couldn't see anything different from usual. <laughs> well, it was just a happen chance, I guess, that I did. Just one little thing. I noticed dust hanging to Red's fetlocks. I didn't think much of it for a while, but finally I thought I'd get down there and see what caused it. I found out it was oil on that horse that made the dust stick to his fetlocks like that. Well, where in the world did Red get oil on his fetlocks? Well, that's what I was wanting to find out. If he'd been walking in oil, it had been on his hoofs. Well, sure, yeah. <laughs> so I figured out that if there was oil on top of water... Red might wade in and keep his hoofs clean, and at the same time get some of that oil up on his fetlock. Say that, oh, right. Right. Good <laughs> So finally, Tenderfoot and I decided to see if we couldn't follow Red when he started off in the night. And, uh, and that's when you saw him join that band of wild horses? <laughs> well, let's not get into that part of the story. <laughs> some of these longhorns like Idaho here kind of inclined to doubt things they don't see for themselves. <laughs> well, <laughs> Alabama, after what you've already told, I believe Arizona here could lick a mountain lion if you told me he could. <laughs> so <would I. laughs> well, we followed Red a long ways on over in the hills near where the Red Horse Ranch touches the Badlands. There's where Red crossed a little stream, and further up, we found a spring bubbling out of the rocks, and I was right. There was oil on top of the water in that spring. It's a remarkable story, Alabama, and a remarkable horse, yes, too. Sir. Well, boys, let's sing a song for the hero of the story. Only one song that'll do, and that's a strawberry roll. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Let me tell you a tale, a good one I own. Of a bucking old bronc, a strawberry roan. I was hanging round town, not earning a dime. Being out of a job, just spending my time. When a stranger steps up and he says, I suppose, you're a bronc busting man from the looks of your clothes. So I guess you're right, there's none I can't tame. If it's riding ponies, that's my middle name. Oh, that strawberry roan. Oh, that strawberry road. He says he's a Cayuse that's never been rode. Guy that gets on him is bound to be thrown. Throwed off the strawberry road. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, Alabama, yeah. you told us Red was going to have something to do with Bradford. What? Bradford? <laughs> well, I might as well tell it. You see, naturally, Rose, we wondered why it was that Bradford wanted to buy up all the land in the country. We all did. He got the Bar D and the Flying W and a lot of other loose land here and there. And it's been about three months that he's been trying to buy the Red Horse Ranch. Why, uh, it doesn't seem possible. Well, there's no use trying to get around it. Somehow or other, Bradford knew that there was oil under this land along the valley here. Well, that dirty... <laughs> Naturally couldn't tell anybody why he wanted to buy the land because they wouldn't sell to him. Oh, and he pretended to be our friend. Yep. He told us he was trying to help us, and all the time he was only taking advantage of us. I'm afraid that's right, Rose. Of course, he had a right to buy if he wanted to. Well, this is no time to have ill feelings. Uh, Mr. Niles, I want you to hear another one of my boys sing. Tex Owens, uh, give Mr. Niles one of the best yodeling tunes you can think of. Well, how about the train whistling blues? Fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Look at y'all that coming, coming down that railroad track. Look at y'all that coming, coming down that railroad track with the black smoke a rolling 
from that old smoke stand. That was a good one, Tex. Let's see what else we can do for Mr. Niles. Alabama, where's Senderfoot? Why, I sent him over to Roaring River, Mr. Carter, to see about that Dawson kid. Oh, you still figured I'm going to let you bring a brat like that on this place? Oh, Dad, now don't make up your mind till you see the boy. Anyhow, we're celebrating tonight. Boys, we're all going to eat here at the ranch house tonight. <laughs> And that reminds me, I'd better go in and see how Cookie's coming with supper. I'll call you all as soon as it's ready. We'll be waiting. Well, how about a little more music now, boys? Hey, wait a minute. Well, if that isn't the worst nerve I ever saw. Why, it's Steve Bradford. Well, good evening, Mr. Carter. Howdy, boys. Well, Mr. Carter, I think I've got a proposition here that might close up the deal on this Red Horse Ranch. If I could just talk to you alone. Bradford. Did you ever walk out across a prairie and step on a nest of hornets? I don't think I know what you mean. Well, I'll show you what I mean. Arizona, take off your shaps. Huh? Oh, gosh, why? And uh, Idaho, get that rain barrel out Say there. Say what's coming oh, up. Yeah. 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 Don't don't be too rough, what do you think you're going to uh, do Bradford, here anyway? Are you going to stretch yourself over that barrel, or are we going to have to put uh, you there? Stand back there. Don't touch me in here. All right. Get away there. Arizona, Let Bob Cheyenne, you each catch hold of him, and I'll help you. Tex, yeah. you get the honor of laying on the shaps and don't hold yourself back. And I've been itching for this day to come. Give me them shaps. I'll show him something. All right, lay on, Tex. Oh! 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 All right, that's plenty. Turn him loose, boys. Well, I'll not forget this, Alabama. Well, we didn't figure you'd be able to. It might remind you which side of the fence to stay on from now on, Bradford. Yeah. <laughs> Go and laugh, you fellas. This isn't the last you'll see of me. Any of you. <laughs> doesn't look as though anyone's taking Bradford's threat very seriously. Alabama still insists on bringing Trigger Dawson's boy to the Red Horse Ranch. Perhaps we'll all get to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> 